Hey, what's going on, guys? I, uh, as I mentioned on the forum the other day, I said I was going to put together a quick video uh, to show you how to easily load your tune files onto your SD card for your Ultra. Uh, so I'm going to show you that how all that works today. Uh, keep this real short, sweet, and to the point. Um, I will tell you in advance uh, what you may see on my screen may look different than yours. I am using Windows 10. Uh, so if you're using a different version of Windows, just understand that the way things look may be different, but the process is going to remain the same. Uh, a couple of things I also want to mention going into this, as far as the updates go for firmware and loading everything, um, make sure that you're using the right software. So uh, what you definitely want to be using is a program called 7-Zip. Let me show you where to get that. Just come into your Google uh, your Google search bar and literally type in 7-zip. Um, make sure you're using 7-zip for the firmware files that you get from RaceMe. Um, they are packaged in this format. They're designed to work with this particular program. Uh, if you're trying to use anything other than this, you're probably going to run into problems. And I want to keep this as simple as it can be. So make sure you get 7-zip. Literally Google 7-zip first link. That'll get you squared away as far as getting the files on your computer. So starting from the top, uh, we'll go right to the RaceMe website. Um, and we'll pull up our Ultra. As you all know, firmwares are down here in the download section. It's always going to be this file that's the largest of all of them. Uh, so all you need to do is make sure you click on that floppy disk to download to your computer. You'll see the download here. And as you can see, it is a 7Z format, referring back to that 7-zip software. I'm going to cancel this because I already have it on my computer. Well, once you have that downloaded, um, it's typically going to show up in your downloads folder. So uh, if you know where that is, of course, open up your file explorer, click on downloads, and excuse my mess here, um, but it will show up in here. Now, obviously, I did not download it, so I'm not going to have it here. But when you download it, it will show up in your downloads folder. Uh, unless you've changed something on your computer as far as where your download saved to, this is where it'll be. Otherwise, you can always choose to follow the path from your downloads at the bottom of your browser. By that, I mean when it's done downloading, it'll pop up down here. You'll just click show in folder. So once you've got your files downloaded, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you keep everything in a easy to find, simple to use location. So I created a folder on my computer for these particular software updates. I keep it in my documents section, race me software updates. And you can see I've only got the 10.6 update in here. Everything else is on my old computer. Uh, but I do date everything that way. If I ever need to revert back to an older firmware or whatever the case may be, I know what I'm looking for. So... Uh, this is where I keep my downloaded file. You can see I've got my 7-zip file in here. And, of course, everything that comes out of the 7-zip. So when you get the 7-zip on your computer, all you need to do is double-click it. It's going to open up 7-zip. You'll see all of the folders in here. Your config, custom data, your RMU, and your SGN files. Just click on the Extract button. It's going to ask you where you want it to go to. And you can see I've got my RaceMe software updates and my 10.6 folder. Uh, of course, point to the folder that you want to save everything to accordingly, and then click your OK button. Once you click OK, you'll see that the five files that I have here at the top will populate in your folder. These are the only files you need to put on your SD card to get your Ultra to work with the new firmware or any updated files that you get. If you have anything else on the SD card, you're going to probably run into some issues with it. So make sure that you limit your content to what you see in this folder, minus the 7-zip file at the bottom. I simply keep that just in case I run into a problem. I can always go back to what came straight from RaceMe. So I'll open up my SD card from my Ultra. Uh, this is the SD card that came with the Ultra. I am also using the SD card reader that came with the Ultra. So no fancy technology here on that front. Uh, everything as it was when it came out of the box uh, is all I've been using to this day. I've had this thing for almost a year and I haven't had any issues. If you do need to purchase a new SD card, make sure it is an SDHC and make sure it's at least a Class 8. 
Anything below class 8 is probably not going to read or write fast enough for the ultra to work properly. You might start getting some errors when you're loading files. So, getting everything from the website to the SD card. You can see between the left and the right screens on my computer here, they look pretty much the same with the exception of the temp folder and this text document right here. Um, basically, when I do new firmware upgrades, I don't format anything because I don't want to risk any damage to the SD card or any changes to the file format. I literally just come in here and I'll select all and I'll click delete. That's all you need to do. Just delete everything off the card. It'll keep it free and clear. One of the big reasons why I try to advise people against formatting is because it can cause changes to the, the way the SD card is structured that make you end up running into issues with how the Ultra can read it. Um, basically, I don't change anything other than what you see in this folder. Uh, you can see the SD card is already named. Uh, that can cause problems if you format it and change the name. If you format it and change the file format. Any of those things will cause the Ultra to have problems with how it reads. So just come in here, delete all your files and folders. Um, make sure you back them up before you delete them. Uh, I always try to save what's on the card to my computer just in case. Um, but make sure you keep it back up in case something goes wrong with your new files. Something doesn't work, you can easily restore. So come in here, delete everything, and then come back to your RaceMe software updates, which you got from the website. Choose your config folder, hold down your shift key, click your SGN file, right click, copy, come back to your SD card, right click, paste. Done. Your new firmware is on there, everything you need is there, you're good to go. Um, if you have files from Ray and you need to have them loaded, they will of course be in your custom folder. ECM files of course go in ECM folder. Your modifiers, like your 12 valve tunes, your loud turbo, whatever the case be, they go in your RTG folder. Don't mess with anything else. Nothing else goes in RTP or stock. Uh, the stock folder is simply there if you pull a stock file from the truck for when you send it to Ray for warp. Um, if you want to change your background on your altar, it will be in your data folder. I'm sorry, not your data folder, your config folder. It's the HBKG file. Um, I'll get into how to do that another time. Uh, but essentially, once you've copied everything from your RaceMe software updates folder to your SD card, you're done. Load your files if you have them from Ray into your custom folder into their appropriate folders. Simple copy and paste there, and that's it. That's all you got to do. So uh, what I'll do is I'll put my SD card back in my truck, and I'll take a video to show you guys how the loading process goes on that end. That way we cover going from the computer to the truck, make sure everybody understands how it all works. And if at any point in time you have any questions, feel free to ask, I'm here to help. So um, the next part of this that you'll see is the trucks. All right guys, so let me show you the second half of this. So we're gonna go ahead and put our SD card back in our Ultra. There we go. Now, one of the things that a lot of people recommend is making sure that you are on a charger or you, you know, have at least a solid battery charge. I definitely agree. Now, I don't personally own a battery charger, so I make sure that I drive the truck for a while uh, throughout the day before I load my tune files because it does take some time. Um, I have never had a problem not using a battery charger. Uh, if you feel more comfortable using one, go for it. Um, but I personally never have, so therefore I can't really say one way over the other to or to not use one. So anyways, moving forwards. Um, I've got my SD card in here. Now, of course, we just want to turn the truck on. Now, I have the push button ignition in my RAM. And for those guys that have the push button, the common question is usually how do I key it or cycle the key, for example. Um, I always just start an accessory. So just push it once. The Ultra is going to turn on. Now, if you're loading new firmware, it is going to pop up and tell you that the firmware has changed. And it should automatically start that process. If you're just loading new files from Ray, um, then, you know, that's a little bit different. But... The, the first half of that with the firmware, it will take care of it on its own. If it doesn't, just unplug your OBD port from underneath your dash, wait a couple seconds, plug it back in, 
it'll kick it on uh, to uh, to redo that that uh, firmware upgrade. So from this stage, if we're just loading new files, and we'll come back to our main screen. Make sure you guys can see this here. All right. So we're going to do our ECM tuning. ECM. And then program custom file to ECM. And then you'll choose the ECM file that you're loading. Now, when you do this, the Ultra is going to tell you what you need to do as far as the key. So right now, you can see I am in ignition or accessory. Uh, so one push of the button for me, one turn of the key for you guys that don't have the push button. The Ultra, when you do this, is going to tell you that you need to go ahead and turn the truck on. So we'll push it one more time to on. Everything will kick on. And then the Ultra will do its thing. It will tell you to turn the key on and off as necessary. Um, keep in mind, the process does typically take about seven minutes. If you're not using a battery charger, uh, like I don't, um, I always try to turn my screen off for my radio, as well as my dome lights, uh, just to minimize the draw on the battery while this is happening. Um, so once you do that, you'll select your file, run through your key on, key off scenarios, and once it's done, you'll hit your exit button and you'll have your new files loaded. Um, for those of you that need to get a uh, stock file for Ray, get stock file for truck is right here above the program custom file. Uh, you'll just click that and everything will load to your SD card. But aside from that, that's it. That's all you need to do to load uh, custom firmware to your Ultra, or I'm sorry, not custom, but new firmware to your Ultra. If you're loading a custom file from Ray, it's right here in your ECM tuning menu. Um, if you're loading anything else, as far as need to change your tire size, of course it's gonna be in the ABS menu. Um, but for the time being, at least to get you guys rolling, that's it, that's all you gotta do. Um, as I mentioned, please feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions. Uh, let me know. I'd be more than willing to, to walk you through any of these steps as necessary. Um, if you feel like I maybe have missed something in this video, please let me know as well. Um, and if there's anything else you guys want to see as far as uh, the Ultra goes, you know, like I said, if you need to change tire size, uh, anything of that nature, let me know. I can make you a video, show you how to walk through everything. Um, but otherwise, appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. And uh, I will see you guys on the forum.